What is up there, YouTube? I just wanted to share this with you because I know everybody's always interested in what I got going on. Here's the original water heater element that was in this. 120 volt, 2000 watt. I was gonna put a smaller wattage one in, like a 1000 watt or an 800 watt water heater element in, but they're so hard to find, I figured, well, I have the solar and wind system with the batteries. I might as well make use of that. So I ordered from Thermodyne. Bob sent me a, a, a DC water heater element, which I had showed in a previous video, that this is a 600 watt, 12 volt water heater element. Okay, now I had already tested this with uh, just a generic wire setup. It wasn't, this, it wasn't as clean as this is. Um, this is just a standard water heater element, or water heater thermostat. And what I did was I replaced the, look at this thin stuff here. This is the water heater wire, or the wire that was in here. This is 16 gauge wire. Not even sufficient enough for this system. It's only 16 gauge wire. This should have been at least 10 gauge wire for a 2000 watt, uh, 120 volt water heater element, but it's not, it wasn't enough. Um, so I also updated the wire to six gauge wire because this will draw about 50 amps at 12 volts. So 600 watts divided by 12 volts is exactly 50 amps. Okay, so yeah, I was right. And the way I'm planning to wire this, just like you're supposed to wire a solid state relay. Oh yeah, did you see that? Look at that, what's that? Oh, this is gonna be the solid state relay that I'm gonna use my uh, wind, sun, wind and sunpower.com dump controller for. This is exactly what they're designed for. It comes with a little plastic cover here to protect the terminals and protect the face. We'll reinstall that. Now I'm still waiting for the heat sink for this. I got a really large heat sink coming for this, which we're gonna use. We're gonna fan cool it and everything with some thermo discs. They'll all be 12 volt controlled. So the positive wire is gonna go directly to the positive side of the solid state relay. And then when the circuit closes, the negative side will come in here to this side of the water heater coil, or the water heater element rather. Go through the water heater element and then be disconnected by this when it gets up to temperature, which I have it set to about 110, 120 degrees based on that control. It normally is set to 150, but because your hands are gonna be in here, I'd like to keep them around 110 degrees. The chemical that's in this, which is a biodegradable, all natural degreasing agent, is compatible with 90 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit, and also regular tap water. Um, so we'll be good there, no problems. And then once I get that all in, this will be the, the positive and negative side of the control right here. We'll be good there. Once I get the heat sink, we'll get some thermal compound on this. We'll make sure it's spread all over this entire heat spreader, which that's what these are called. The surface here is called the heat spreader. It's what dissipates the heat from the solid state controls inside this box. And you can see that's, that is a big, beefy solid state relay. That, that blows these other solid state relays out of the water, which this heat sink here is way too small. This won't work. It's not, a, there's not enough heat dissipation on this heat sink. And that way we could have a little bit more control over the batteries with this. Um, see, now we're actually using one of these for its intended purpose. So I like this for this. It'll work perfectly. We'll be able to equalize the batteries. We'll be able to control the battery power. We'll be able to control the solar and wind much better using the solid state relay with this particular setup. Now using the, one of these on a grid tie system, no, forget it. Screw that noise. I'd rather use a contactor or a mechanical relay. They're basically the same thing. Well, actually they are the same thing. A contactor is a mechanical relay, whether it be a little 40 amp automotive style relay or the large style that I have on the wind and solar system now. Um, that's it right there. It's a bio clean. And here's the, uh, the chemical sock. This is the, the filter sock that goes in here, just like so. 
And we put this cap on, it's got the little drain ports on it, and that's where that sits. And there you go, there's my parts washer. And you got your, your directional wand, and then you have your cleaning brush. Okay? And then your control valves, you can open and close those valves to control the flow out of either this, or this, or both, identically. Which is great, this, this is a great system. And then we, have, we also have the lid. And we're going to replace this double switch. This one here is for the pump. This one here was for the water heater element. We're going to replace this setup with a single switch. And it's a three prong. You look at, see, you could tell here. Here, look at this. Look at how hot that son of a bitch got. It actually melted the hot side of the terminal. So, you know what we're going to do? We're going to replace this entire cord. Okay. So, you can see down inside, you can see the, there's a little bit of water. Just over a little more. There's a little bit of fluid in the bottom still, but for the most part, it's all gone. You can see there's the pump. Oh, there's the pump. Nope. Nope. Hang on. Let me get my bearings here. There you go. There's the pump. It looks like a little giant pump. Nothing fancy about it. Just like one of those pond pumps. And there's the water heater element sticking inside. But um, yeah, this is probably one of the best investments next to the tire machine that I've I've made for doing what I do. And see, that's why I'm thinking if I put a light here. When the lid is open, I could turn the light on and see a lot better. That might be what we do. We'll have to see. But uh, for now, that's that's it. That's just a quick tour of the parts washer with the new DC water heater element.